So what we're going to do now is we're going to talk about another STL sequential container, and this is the one called list. So we've talked about vector, which is used to add things at the end and remove things at the end efficiently, and it uses contiguous chunk of memory. We talked about deck, which allows you to add things at the beginning and end and remove them from the beginning and end efficiently. But if you try to remove or move and add things into the middle, it's, it's inefficient because it has to slide the contents around. And that's also a problem with, with vector as well. So perhaps there's no surprise, there's another sequential container called a list. And the list allows you to be able to efficiently add elements anywhere in the containers. And you can put things in the middle, you can put things at the end, you can put things at the beginning. And adding and removing elements anywhere is very efficient. The difference, of course, is that, or the trade-off, is that it doesn't allow random access iterators. So if you want to get somewhere in the middle in order to add an element efficiently, you're gonna have to sit there and kind of iterate through the list till you get to the point where you want to be. And then you can go ahead and insert something efficiently. So that's the classic trade-off between lists and lists that are non-contiguous, that are allocated with pointers, of course, versus more contiguous data structures like vectors and to some extent like decks. They, they have trade-offs. Under the hood, list is implemented as a doubly linked list, hence the word list. And that means that you can go forwards and backwards with equal ease. And you can also add elements efficiently anywhere because any given node knows who its predecessor is as well as its successor. So that's all very efficient. If you don't need to be able to do things that require going backwards, but only go forwards, then you can choose forward list, which is a singly linked list implementation that doesn't have all the bells and whistles, but it's gonna save you one pointer per node or per element in the list. All right, so that's a quick overview of list as a concept. Now let's go ahead and take a look at some source code. So we've got a couple examples here that talk about list. This example starts by just reiterating what I just said about a list, about how it's stored non-contiguously and it allows, therefore, because it's non-contiguous, it allows efficient insertion removal anywhere in the list container. Um, you can also move blocks of elements within the container efficiently because it's just rearranging pointers. And you can go through the list either forwards or backwards because it supports a so-called bidirectional iterator. Bidirectional iterators, of course, are not as powerful as random access iterators for reasons we'll talk about when we get to iterators, which will occur uh, early next week. So uh, as a general rule of thumb, lists are more efficient than vectors and decks in terms of inserting, extracting, and moving elements at any place within the container as opposed to the beginning or the end, which is what you get with decks and vectors. And therefore, some algorithms are going to work better on lists than the other, other types of data structures. The big problem, of course, with the list is you don't get random access to the various elements. So you have to move stuff around. And uh, the other problem is that you're going to have non-contiguous memory allocation and you have to keep track of the pointers. So depending on what you're trying to do, it may be more efficient space-wise to use a list. It may be more space efficient to use a vector. It really depends on your, your situation. So one of the nice things about STL is that by making list and deck and vector fairly plug compatible, you can write generic code, get it working, and then plug in the appropriate container and do some benchmarking to see which one actually works the best for you. So that gives you a lot more flexibility in, in optimizing your code. Very good principle of programming is to get it working and then optimize it as opposed to obsessing over performance at the beginning, not getting it to work. That's a big problem. Here's the signature. We've already talked about that. Um, the signature of the, the list is going to have the, the type name T as always, and it's also gonna have the allocator as always. So it has the same basic signature as deck and vector, which is why you can pretty much plug, plug compatible, replace it in most contexts, not all, but most. So here's a little example that shows off an STL list. We're gonna start by making two empty lists, and then we're gonna go ahead and put A through J at the end of the list, and then we're gonna put zero through nine at the front of the list. So we're gonna end up with basically, you know, nine, eight, seven, six, blah, 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 up to zero, and then we're gonna have A, B, C, D, E up to J at the end. Then we're gonna go ahead, oh, I take it back, sorry. We, we end up with two lists. 
So we're going to have um, A through J in list one, and then 9 to 0 in list 2. So once we do that, we print out the size of the lists, which will have the number of elements we just put in there. And then we're going to do some fun stuff here. For list 1, we're going to go ahead and iterate through it, uh, except we're going to use an iterator in a rather funky way. We're going to loop while the list is not empty, while list 1 is not empty. We're going to get an iterator to the first element. We're going to print that element. And then we're going to go ahead and pop the first element. So we're basically going through this container, popping as we go and printing out the context, like the content. Then down here, we're going to go ahead and do a similar thing, except now we're going to go backwards instead of going forwards. So once again, we're going to keep looping while the list is not empty. And we're going to get an iterator to the end item in the list. So the last element. Actually, as you recall, iterator, uh, the end method, the factory method that gets the iterator to the end of the list is always one past the end. So in order to be able to get the first element, which is actually it's get the last element, we have to decrement it first. And so we're going to say P, which is the name of our, our iterator, P, I would say minus minus P, that moves it back by one, and then we dereference it. And that way we ensure that we're always pointing to a valid element that's in the in the list. And then we pop, after we print the element, we then pop the last element. And we'll keep doing that until we're done. So let's go ahead and run the code. You can see here that the lists both had 10 elements in them, and they were A through J and 0 through 9. And then when we printed them out, you can see that we ended up getting A through J, which is the first loop for list 1, where we did things from the beginning. And then we go through the other list, and this time we take things off the end, and so it'll end up printing 0 through 9. So just kind of illustrating some different techniques. Now recall the, the very important discussion we had before about um, why operations like uh, pop back don't return an element. They simply remove the element. And that has to do with strong exception safety guarantees. Let's go over here and we'll run another example. So the STL lists have a number of characteristics. They have many of the same methods that the vector and deck has, except they don't have capacity, reserve, at, and subscript. They, of course, don't have um, capacity and reserve because they're not allocating the memory contiguously. And they don't have at or subscript because they don't support random access iterators. And therefore, it would be sort of misleading to make it look like you could randomly access the elements in a list efficiently. Now, I suppose they could have implemented at and subscript and just had them motor from wherever the thing was to the location in the list. Um, but that would kind of defeat the purpose of trying to discourage people from using lists in a pseudo random access way. And so that's why they decided to leave those things out. You can insert and remove elements anywhere in the list, including the middle, in constant time once you've got an iterator to the location you're trying to do that at. And one of the other cool things about a list is if you go ahead and modify the list, you remove something, you add something that won't invalidate existing iterators, unless, of course, the element that you're pointing to by your iterator is the one that you remove. <laughs> so um, it doesn't invalidate iterators unless you remove the element that your iterator is pointing to. So here's another example using a list, and it's going to demonstrate its bidirectional iterator capacity. So we make an empty list, we put zero at the end, and we go ahead and we push zero at the front. So now we've got two zeros. And then we go ahead and we take the iterator to the beginning of the list, we increment it by one. So it's going to basically store that. It's going to now be pointing to the second element in the list, which is array sub one. And then we go ahead and put a two there. So what that should do, that'll put it, um, it'll insert two after the first element. Maybe I should say um, before the second element. Because what we're doing is we're skipping over the first element and then we're inserting before the, uh, the second element. So now it should say zero, two, zero. Then we're going to put a couple more elements at the end, five and six. 
And then we go ahead and print the contents of our list. So let's take a look at what that does. That should be, I think, 02056, if I'm not mistaken. And I'm right, 02056. So that's just demonstrating how you can use bidirectional iterators to increment, or we could have decremented, of course, through the list. And uh, actually, that would be kind of fun. Let's, let's try that just for kicks. Let's add another example here. Let's insert by saying minus minus list end. And let's put, I don't know, 42. That's always a good number to use. And uh, you can see what happens there is it, it put the two in. And then we went to the end of the list, and then we inserted B at the end of the list, and that put the value 42 there, and then we went ahead and put uh, five and six in there. So when you say my list end, that'll get you the iterator to the end, which would be the zero. Then we, sorry, my list end gets you the iterator one past the end. We decrement that by one. We're now we're pointing to the end of the list, which has, of the final element in the list, which has the value zero and we insert at that point, it puts it before the final element. So this is going to go ahead and just document that for posterity. Insert 42 before the end, before the final element in the list by decrementing the end iterator. Whereas up here, we incremented the begin iterator. All right, hopefully that makes sense. Uh, this is just demonstrating the fact that we have the ability to do bidirectional operations, which involve either plus plusing or minus minusing the operation. What you can't do with a bidirectional iterator is you can't say my list dot end minus one. That won't work because you can only do the minus operation which could be minus two, minus five, minus 10, or plus two, plus five, plus 10. You can only do that on a random access iterator. And we don't have that for list.